So um, it's never been harder to be a college student than it is today, knowing full well that college degrees are not even necessary to get a career position and kids are dropping out and making millions as YouTube stars. So as I realize that I have the ability to help, it's no longer a choice for me to be a district manager, it is an honor. For more students nowadays are saying that high school was a bad joke where teachers didn't care and most students never really learned how or had to study. The term uh, elitist recruiting has also been thrown around. You know, who should I try to recruit? You know, that, those high school kids that I know are sharp or those college, man, I don't know where those college kids are from. You know, I'm always happy to support a superstar and I know that kid's gonna make it and they're gonna sell the, the valedictorians, the, the frat stars, the seven stars from St. Cash Money, Dad paid for it, private and academy for kids who dab and floss, but do, do those kids really need me? Th they have the family connections, they uh, might even have the scholarship, authority. you know, I'm looking for the underdogs, the ones that are ready to rise above that first time college student immigrated from another country. You know, I'm not looking for the sharp ones. You know, the people in this room, you are the sharpeners. Now, before I go into the meat and potatoes of the last three years of innovating the program, I want to mention a couple of things. First of all, um, I wanted to thank uh, Will Chido for the, from the Lubbock office, who was the first manager to break out with the virtual demo. Um, coming up to the end of my 2016 fall, like uh, maybe some of you guys are today. I was feeling pretty good about our first months, a couple hundred thousand, but pretty nervous for the fall. Uh, like Lloyd said, my office isn't a college town. 70% of the population are college students. And my last couple of high school grads left for college, I was ready to almost even fire up my own sample kit and uh, start selling for the fall. And then everything changed when at SC2, a cocky college kid out of the Lubbock office, Riley Looking Bill, announced that he had sold $17,000 for SC2 and beat my all-star high school kid by less than a couple of hundred dollars. And as he took his, afro, uh, his, uh, his trophy, he smugly said on stage, and I did all of that sitting on my couch at Texas State University through online demos, and I about fell out of my chair online demos, I immediately went up to the stage, I got his phone number, and I said, would you like to help me and do an online demo for me next week over the phone? He did it, I was sold, and I decided that was gonna be my program. And if this was gonna happen, I was going to have to go all in. Now, before I go into the program, I wanted to pop some fear bubbles by giving you a list of expectations that if you're gonna go into the virtual don't, uh, program will scare, worry, and frustrate you. When you first transition into this type of program, people will legitimately leave during training, unannounced. Bye, Felicia. You actually have to train college students to become salespeople as Cutco does not sell itself on a video. You're gonna to have to give up a couple of Saturday late nights in the office as reps do their first demo. I've stayed as late as 10 p.m. closing deals and come back Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Pizza budgets increasing $400. Demo cancellations are a normal thing. 50% of their demos might cancel. No sale mentality is no longer 0 for 3 and stop it. You did a no, that, do you know how incredibly awesome it is how generous it is of our company to help you get the brand out. You know what, go do another demo. Your sale is coming next. This month in September, we paid out $3,000 of base pay. So thank you, Olean, for your help with that. Welcome to the wonderful world of one and two piece orders. Our average order size for the fall is 254 versus 350 nationally. So. 
Some of you will encounter this in your first few training seminars and start to double the validity of this program and quit on the program because it's just too hard. And I want to let you know that it's okay to quit. Uh, I'm sure my representatives will keep your territory warm until the January program. But if you can withstand it mentally, you can have more fun with your huge college team. Hit the President's Banquet, buy SLC, and get ridiculous monthly and campaign bonuses that can allow you to profit more in the fall than you did in the summer, and yes, even win $10,000. So if you're still in and you want some more, let me hear a love that money. So let's go to campus and wreck shop. I love a campus. I dream about it. I wish I had more access. All I get are two turntables and one job fair, and that's where it's at. Thank you for the one person that got that. Let me uh, tell you what two tables and one job fair can create. Campus, to me, is like that scene in The Lion King where the wildebeest come over the mountain, except this time, Simba is ready with big claws and big fangs, and it's time for dinner. For three team meetings, I promote the fun of campus, our team about to explode. Can we take 100, 150? Can we take 200 applications in one day? Do you want to learn what recruiters know and how they start six-figure income positions out of college? I promote the campus program to our division, having other district managers from around the, the nation stop by. I am happy to be a self-promoter. My campus is important. AMs are asked to take class off that day. It's an important day. They can tell their teachers it's for their job. We show up to campus with the fire of a thousand suns, and we don't get chairs. Anyone who sits from the hours of 8 to 2 p.m. is out of the family. So this is not an art, this is a science. In the handout that hopefully you've gotten a, a chance to download has my entire scripts, which some of you have already asked and seen. I'm gonna cover a couple of the details from it today. First of all is your three-pronged system to recruit people who never even knew they were looking for a job and have them launch from training five days later. Number one is the recruiter, the bubbly, outgoing, energetic person in your office. They have one job, the business card fishing move, where they take a business card and they just say as many times as possible, looking for part-time work? You can work from your dorm room, $17 base appointment. Are you interested? And when somebody takes one and they look and they capture, they just don't let go of the card. And they fish them onto the table. Once they brought them to me, their job is to go back fishing. And then you, the boss, and next to you, the new representative who has never even looked at an on-campus script, the star. When they come up to me, it's so simple to convert them to an application. We tell them we are recruiting for the online marketing department for Cutco Cutlery. The best part about the position is the flexibility. Our students meet with customers under one of two platforms, either one-on-one -on -one in person or through an online virtual demo, and I point to the training manual, to the words online virtual demo. Because the demo can be accessed online, it means our students can do their appointments in our office, which is X away from our school, or from the comfort of their own dorm room couch. One second pause for them to realize that this is the college job of their dreams, and then I say, yeah, pretty much dream job material, huh? And then I give them a high five. They're in. You ever have a couple of hours between classes and not sure what to do, can't go to work? Well, our reps can do two or three online demos, and because of the $17 base pay point to the card, you can make 50 bucks. So, did you want to go ahead and fill out that application? It's a, it's a yes. It's a resounding yes. Number three, and the most important person, is the 100% direct scheduler. They are confident, they are assertive, they know their script and the interview times. Great, so let's assume everything does work out. How soon would you be interested in getting started and making money? The answer is always as soon as possible. 
Great. Well, we are hosting informational interviews in our office. They're pretty informal, so most students just show up in whatever they're wearing, no resume, and you'll find out everything about the position. And at the end of it, if you think it's a good fit, we'll have a manager meet with you one on one, and then we can decide on a starting date for you. So it looks like you have classes today till four. Does six o'clock today work for you, or does tomorrow at three o'clock work better for you? It's always a yes. 70% do direct schedule. Goal is more, but your job is to always try. Our interview is just like yours, except we add a, a couple of slides screenshotted from the online demo. We do cover, again, on the pre-screen, we sell under one of two platforms, either in person or on the online virtual demo. We mention that the biggest perk of our position is that there are no territory restrictions. Again, thank you to corporate for that as well. So your names list can come from anywhere in the United States. That's such an advantage since in most offices, they only come up with 10 to 20 names, but in our office, reps can come in with 20 to 30, 40 more names because they can write down friends and family from anywhere in the USA. Now, let's talk about the training. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna highlight the keys, but I've written in this handout every single change, edit, and small minutia that I have worked on for the last three years to make this program seem seamless. So anyone can do it, even if, like me, you have never once done an online demo. Key to prep your students and assistant managers for the sake of their job to give tips that will support the online demo. A couple are the, you have to do your first demos from the office, follow the manual, be upbeat, and you gotta make sure you call Damien to help you close. And if anyone says that they prefer to do in-home demos or that the in-home demos are even anything close to being better, there's a pretty good chance they're getting a hearty slicer to the femur at the next event. In training, while I have the PowerPoint on a different TV, which I'll have two of them next to them, is I have the online demo on the entire time. If you have no results with online demos, make sure you pull up the national report so that obviously they can see what online demos are being sold nationwide. They need to understand this is a program, not an experiment. A few tips I have them add to their training manual is that the customers must be at home, not at work. To reschedule the appointment if the wife is not there and we never, ever, 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 ever see the husband by himself ever. You must be patient with internet issues. FaceTime Mrs. Jones to fix them. And don't send the link to the demo until five minutes before the presentation so they don't peek. You want to check in with each customer about two to three slides by simply asking, so do you see this slide? Do you see this slide? People will move forward. During training, when I open up and start the training manual, I'll add, so obviously because of the fact that the virtual demo and our in-home demo are the same, I'm gonna go through both of them simultaneously so you can see how they're identical in their delivery, except for the fact that with a virtual demo, you don't have to brush your hair or even be wearing pants, uh, unless you do them here at the office. I'll have my blue book in front of me as well, so they can reference that too. I still cut rope and leather and food, specifically focus on cutting lots of food during training. I'll explain that during the manual, those, mice, those mouse icons are not just click forward. On the Google Slides version of the online demo, if you're using that, which I am, some of the action steps are click the video or click outside the box. You have to teach students how to show a customer to do that. Any sort of space where the representative feels that the customer is getting frustrated hurts their confidence. So you must prepare them for anything and make sure that they understand that it's okay to have it happen, but you know how to fix it. I do have Drew Frank's value price up. I still have him run that. That is the only part of training during the online demo program in the fall and the spring that I have uh, Drew run for me. I also have the William Sonoma Wustoff page pulled up 
so that way I can show them that too. And the Vimeo of Modern Marvels up always. So that way I never have to take time between those things. Those are all going to be ready to be shown. So page one of the manual, not really many changes. I do recommend though that you make an about me page and send it to your customers with a link when the demo starts. This will be uh, here, I believe, on the next slide. Off to the right. You can write down both of those bit.ly's as they will provide you uh, a resource. The one to the right is a PowerPoint slide that you can have your representative simply download and edit the pictures and the About Me section on. Now, on page two, I do tell them to put in parentheses about getting food in the penny. That's only for the in-home demo. And since the video for the shears must be clicked on to start, I explain to reps how to guide a customer to do so. I have the representative watch the video of the shears and have no commentary from me, and then I play it again with my commentary and ask them, so what'd you notice the difference was? That way they realize they have to be an ESPN sports commentator on awesome kitchen knife videos through the demo. I have them add all of the names and uses around the space where the shears and the vegetable peeler are. And with the peeler, there's no really need to change anything, except you do want to lose your mind about the peeler. Again, helpful for PRs in the future. I have somebody come up to the front and peel a carrot just so they know how awesome it is. On the junk knife page, it's important to emphasize the gross face. Representatives have to do the gross face, so I'll have them role play that section, and I'll walk around and just make a gross face at them the entire time. I ask them, have you ever had a conversation with your mom and you could tell she's not in a good mood without looking at her? Exactly, your face matters during this part, so you gotta make the gross face. College students sometimes can feel they're a little too cool for school, so I'm gonna force the issue in this section so they understand that it's my program that will help them sell Cutco. Make sure that during the Cutco rope cutting video that the representative tells the customers that the first two knives are actually not Cutco knives. That can be an easy mistake for a customer to assume. So, do you see Mrs. Jones? That one's a serrated edge. You can hear it cutting, right? Number two, that's a non-Cutco knife. Can you see the force in that person's hand? Number three, that's our Cutco knife. Pause. Let the knife video do the rest. I have them role play that page too. On the guarantee page, uh, I'm gonna invite you to consider something that I've decided to add to my program. Feel free to ask your division manager about this before you do. However, I do let my representatives know that because this is my pilot program, that just like Amazon does, I will offer to pay for any of your customers' exchanges or return shipping to ensure they are 100% confident in purchasing the Cutco today. By the way, that is a $10 cost that I've had to do one or two times in three years. You gotta remember, we're selling Cutco here. So they're not gonna have to replace it, but I just want their customers to feel confident that our office has their back. When we are doing the food cutting part of the training manual, the only thing that matters during that section, and I, I kinda jumped the gun, is when we're doing the names and uses part, the only thing that matters during that section is food cutting. I do it while we're talking about each knife, and then we have a food cutting frenzy at the end of that section where I want them to cut something with every single piece. I missed it once, our sales plummeted that week with online demos. They need to be sold. They need to tell their customers, I use this for this, and it was awesome. That spatula sweater, my manager has four of them. Here's what he uses it for. And, and, I need them to bring that fire on every single one and ask the customer after each knife, so what do you think you would use that for? When we, uh, when we finish food cutting, I have Drew go ahead and talk about value price. However, since this is the first time I'm showing a video, I do interact the entire time. I'm not checked out. I actually take all of the notes that Drew takes on his 
whiteboard, on my whiteboard, I pause it, I ask questions. Every time there's a question, I pause it so they answer. That way they are completely interactive the whole entire process. And uh, at the end of the close, at the bottom on page nine, I do have them write down, Mrs. Jones, since I'm brand new, do you mind if I call my manager to verify that I'm on, a, uh, that I'm on my demo? And during training, I will teach representatives how to do a three-way call, as many of them don't know how to do it. So call a rep, call another rep, and then I'll role play exactly what, as a rep, I would say to Aunt Sally. I've had a lot of people asking me, how do representatives drop down and close? Uh, we'll go into that a little bit later here in my talk. As far as names list, the, uh, the key section that I make an edit on is when we're making the schedule. At 4.30, we put a dollar sign. At 6 o'clock, they write free pizza party. So whether you made your first sale or you had to learn how to drop down all the way, we're going to celebrate with you guys at 6 p.m. Hopefully your favorite flavor of pizza is free pizza. 6 p.m., that's why most of our reps stick around. I've had every person that stops by training give that as a tip. Make sure you do your first demo in training. Oh yeah, it was so much more comfortable that way. Create the expectation not from you, but from the evidence of success. When we start teaching the phone approach, I directly teach the online virtual demo phone approach, which has been included in the cloud. And while it is the same one that's on page 18 of the, uh, I know the Southwest Region Training Manual, I, I, I like the fact that if I staple it on top of the traditional approach, it's next to the calendar. That way there's not that awkward flipping between page 18 and page 25 for them to write down all their appointment slots. So hopefully that'll have a couple of things, that'll be somehow edited soon in some sort of way, but it, it does create facility when they're phoning. Because of the nature of my territory, the majority are online demo reps, but every once in a while a unicorn throws their way in my office and we get a local rep. And so during the phone jam, when they're starting to phone, what I'll do is I'll pull them into my office and I have what's called my seven foot tall conversation. And I, I pull them aside and I say, uh, hey Dane, I don't know if you realize this, but this is very much like a basketball team and everybody around here is about six feet tall, but..." You're seven feet tall. I don't know if you realize that. And the reason you're seven feet tall is because you're going to do in-home demos. And I just completely own that moment to make sure they understand why. You realize how awesome it was to sell and show Cutco right now, right? Well, imagine how much easier it's going to be for you if you can cut the penny and rope and food in front of the customer's home. Let me just teach you the in-home version of the phone approach. Surprise, it's the same thing. You just ask for the address except for the email address. But when you're phoning, I want you to phone in that room and you are going to crush everybody else. Now, don't tell them that. Don't tell them that you're going to crush them. But me and you both know how this is going to go. And he's like, oh, hell yeah. And he goes with extra confidence to book his demos. A couple of simple assignment edits is I want them to bring their laptop. I want them to go on that website overnight and see if they can make their goals page. We'll be working on it during the breakfast the next day. After training, I text them to remind them to send their customers an email conversation. Right around 9.30, I'll, e I'll text message the entire training group to remind them to send their confirmation emails. In the morning at around 7 a.m., I will text them to remind them to text their customers all of their appointment slots as well. And when I'm doing day two dropping down, we're going through the smaller sets. I'm gonna teach them how to tell their customers to click back and forth through the starter sets. And when we're talking about referrals, the main thing is to teach your representatives how to handle the I'll do it later or I'll send it to you later, which is also in the script I've sent you guys on the cloud. At the end of training, while Riley's virtual demo was good, Jacoby's is better. And in your handout, you'll have the link to a, not just an audio, but a video Zoom meeting that shows the exact places where a representative this summer sold $24,000, had a $10,000 SC2 push from online demos, give tips 
throughout the process and go through the best goal sharing section I've ever heard. Along the way, I'll pause it, give pointers, give tips, and that's the last hour of training before they start their first online demos in the office. And after training, that's when the real fun starts. Traditionally, you high five people out the door. I just have high fives to the chair. I want them to jump onto their website early, organize them into spaces, have water bottles, I give them snacks, and I just pump them up. I walk around with high fives, little massage, how you doing, chest bump, butt slap, you're ready to rock. Get ready to mentally manage cancellations. Oh, that one canceled, hey, what's your 6.30? Why don't you move that one up? Let's give them a call right now. Cancellations will happen. You will get on FaceTime with grandma to help her figure out how to go onto a website too. Everything is positive, everything upbeat. You are the mental manager. Remind them to smile, and when you hear them get to page eight and nine, I do the, put them speakerphone please, and I point to verification of the demo. So Mrs. Jones, I wanna first of all say thank you so much for taking the time to hear Stacy's presentation. Have you ever heard of Cutco before? Or is the first time you're hearing it? That was the first time. Well, great, we uh, typically do show Cutco in person. However, we built out this online presentation three years ago so students could have a job where they could work from home and still get great experience. Do you have any feedback for them on the demo? It's always obviously positive. And here's the key. Now, Mrs. Jones, because you're seeing Stacy on her first weekend, we have her check in during her demos so we can teach her how to go from a larger set to a smaller set. So do you mind if I go through some of the smaller options with you? And that way Stacy can learn on the job since she's brand new. By the way, you can say no as many times as you want when she asks you for the order. I promise we have taught her so it will not hurt her feelings. But if at the end you see a deal that's so sweet that you wanna say yes, obviously don't hesitate to say yes because it will help her towards her scholarship competition. And then I say, Stacy, go ahead and have them click on the next slide. And I have Stacy actually read the demo to her. Go ahead and read to her the galley set. Okay, go ahead and remind her of the buy now bonus. Okay, go ahead and ask her for the order. Too much money, okay, read the bottom where it says if no. And I will literally not close the deal for the customer, I'm just simply proctoring the process to go properly. I do that for two demos for each representative. And if you're wondering how much time will this take, it depends how willing you are to take the time at the beginning of this process and then train your assistant managers to do this for you after they're trained. A Couple of last minute slides here. This is called the Mary Sheet. Feel free to write down this bitly as well. It is a skeleton of the drop down. I have my representatives use during, uh, and I don't teach it in training, I actually teach it in advanced training, but you can simply download a copy of it. You'll notice it has them write down the homemaker, the galley, starter sets, five pieces, and the value savings and price of the four options, the four specials, and finally, the reserve, the buy now bonus. It's simple, not simple enough for training, but they'll get it by advanced training. It's like in calculus when they taught you the hard way to do it first, and then you learn the easy way, and you're like, why didn't you teach me that before? You had to learn the hard way first. I've hired a social media intern getting three credits at Texas State University to actually post on our pages success of our representatives. We do video spotlights where she will interview representatives and everything is in our office. We do Facebook Live in our office and uh, I'm so proud of our space. I want everybody, especially the career services department at my school to see it. And I make sure that's happening by hashtagging Texas State as well as hire a Bobcat, which is the career services hashtag on everything that we post. And it is very normal for the head of career services to comment on our videos. Looks great, great job. What an awesome experience these students are having. And to finish off, I'd like to explain to you the value of this relationship. When Trent spoke about his top eight, Summer Salazar is in my top eight. She is the head of career services at Texas State University. 
She is my number one business partner. The table that we have in her relationship is not a priority of mine. That table and that relationship is a knight in shining armor there to protect my lifeline to our key recruits. Our career services department loves that we are the online marketing department for Cutco, that we have flipped our sales model to accommodate the needs of her students, and that we are, in her words, accessible. When you do things the right way, you are investing for the long term. And at our last campus event, the career services department posted a little notice that we were going to be there. One of the Texas State students commented regarding human trafficking. Within minutes, career services called me personally, removed the post from their own student, and looked the student up and called them to educate them on our program. With all the misinformation and ignorant trolls that are out there, this was a big win. And you can win at this program too, because it's not about being perfect at this program. It is about progress. Good luck.